are continuing our Build by Blueprint series. I believe we are in week six, which is awesome. Man, what I have been loving about this series is that as we have been taking the time to dive into God's word about what he says about the church, we see that God has given us a specific blueprint and some specific instructions about what the church is and what the church is called to do. Amen. We see that God actually has an opinion. He has a blueprint. He has instructions. He, he has given us a detailed outline of what a church is and what a church is called to do and what it looks like. And I want to I wanna just say, too, I, what I love about God's blueprint is that God's blueprint, when we follow God's blueprint, we can be confident in knowing that, number one, we are going to have a church that stands the test of time. Amen. We will have a church that stands the test of time. We also believe when we follow God's blueprint that we will build a church that grows and flourishes in every season. In COVID, out of COVID. In recession, out of recession. That we will have a church that grows and flourishes in every season. And lastly, we believe that when we follow God's blueprint for the church, we believe that we will be a church that not only blesses God and blesses the heart of God, but we will be a church that God can bless. Because God will bless what he establishes. He will bless what he establishes. So as we begin to follow the blueprint of what the church of the living God looks like, as we begin to submit to his way, his blueprint, not how we think it should be, not what my opinion, how we think we should do it or what it looks like, as we begin to dive into his word and follow his blueprint, we believe that Church of the Harvest will be a church that stands the test of time. Amen. We believe that Church of the Harvest will be a church that grows and flourishes in every season for generations to come. We believe that Church of the Harvest will be a church that blesses the heart of God and a church that God can bless. We want, we want, we want to be a church that God can bless because we follow his blueprint. So we have been, uh, this is week six, so I want to recap everything that we've been talking about in this series real quick because I think it's really important. And again, I say this every single time uh, I share in a series, if you missed the last couple of weeks, please go to our YouTube channel and watch it. Watch all the other weeks. It, it has been amazing. But I'm going to recap real quick. Um, the first two weeks we talked about and we learned that church is not a gathering or an event. It is the body of Christ. It is the body of Christ. We learned that you can't just put a whole bunch of people in one room and call it a church. No, no, it's not a gathering. It's not an event. It's actually a body. It's something that we are connected to, that we are giving, and we are also receiving. Church, we also learned, uh, Pastor Elijah brought an amazing uh, message that Jesus is the only acceptable foundation for God's church. Jesus is the only acceptable foundation for God's church. In order for us to build God's church by his blueprint, Jesus must be our foundation. He must be why we do it, who we do it with, and who we do it for. Jesus must be our foundation. We also learn that God puts leaders in place for us to follow, submit to, and honor. And in the same way, leaders are to submit to God and lead as surrendered servants. That God places leaders for a reason in his church for us as the body of Christ to, to follow, for us to submit to, for us to honor. And for those leaders that God places in his church, that those leaders are also accountable to God. That they, in the same way people submit and follow them, leaders must submit and follow Jesus. Amen? And lastly, we learned that the church is built on disciples, not attenders. The church of Jesus Christ is built on disciples. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, not attenders. He didn't just say grab them and have them sit in a seat. He said have them sit in a seat and make them disciples. That the church of the living God, we're called to so much more than just attend. But that we are called to become disciples and make disciples. I want to read in Ephesians 4 today. Um, Ephesians 4, we're going to be reading 3 through 7. And we've been reading Ephesians 4 uh, throughout this entire uh, series. So I wanted to start there. And we're going to go up to verses 3 through 7. And it says this, Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, 
binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Today, we're going to be talking about unity. Will you look to your neighbor and say unity? Unity. Today, we're going to be talking about unity. And I want to start off by saying this, because we're going to that passage that we just read that we're going to kind of dive deeper into the scriptures, but I want to start off from the very beginning um, in Ephesians in, in four in verse three, it says that Paul is talking to the church of Ephesus. So he's talking to the church and he says, I want you to make every effort to be united. I want you to make every effort to be united. See, that sticks out to me because it tells me that unity is not something that's just going to happen. Unity will have to, will require our effort. Unity within the church is not just going to happen because we show up at the same time and sing the same songs. Unity within a church is going to require our efforts as the church. It, re- it, it not only requires our efforts, but I would go so far to say that as the body of Christ, as the church of the living God, unity is our responsibility. That we would be responsible for the unity that we have within the body of Christ. I want to read John 17, 20 through 23. This is Jesus praying. Man, I love this so much. This is Jesus praying, and he says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. That's you and I. We are the ones that believe in Jesus because of the message, because of the gospel. I pray that they will all be one just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. This is Jesus saying, let them be in such perfect unity that the world will believe the message of Jesus Christ. As a church, unity Unity is not only what sets us apart from the rest of the world. Unity in the body of Christ is actually the evidence of Jesus' love. Unity within the body of Christ as we are united. I mean, think about this. Where else on this planet do you see such a diverse group come together on a Sunday morning and sing songs? Where else? Where else? What other group do you see senior citizens and teenagers sitting at a table encouraging and praying for one another other than Church of the Harvest small group? Where else? There's nothing like this in the world. There's nothing. Where else do you see people making and eating caramel apples together in a parking lot in Del Paso Heights? What other group does that? Only the church of the living God does that. Our unity is not only what sets us apart from the rest of the world, but it is evidence of a stronger and higher love and a stronger and higher hope that we believe in. It is the evidence because such a diverse group of people with different gifts, different backgrounds, different personalities, different upbringings, all of us, different ages, we all come together and we worship one God. That unity, man, that unity, I, I want to I say this. this, that unity, Jesus says, is what's going to save the world. Jesus says that as we begin to operate in perfect unity, that that is what's going to reach this world. That is what's going to save this world. That's what's going to, uh, that's going to be what's different, what sets us apart in our community. That people would say, what is this? What is this? That all these different looking people, all these different ages, that they're sitting down, they're hanging out, they're encouraging one another, they're praying for one another. What is this? Man, unity Unity is what's going to save this world. It is the evidence of Jesus Christ that our world needs. 
when we're talking about unity in the body of Christ, Ephesians 4 shows us what we must be on the same page about. So we're talking about the importance of unity, that unity is important, number one, because that's God's blueprint. That's what he says. That should be it, right? That's all we should need for convincing that unity is important, that God has asked us to be united. But also it is important because as we pray for this city, as we begin to pray for our lost loved ones to come home, that Jesus says that our unity is actually what's going to save them. Our unity is what's going to bring them in the door and say, what is all of this about? What, what, what is this all about? You mean it doesn't matter where I come from? I can belong to this family? You mean it doesn't matter what I've done? I can belong to this family? You mean it doesn't matter uh, how many mistakes I've made or it doesn't matter that I, I'm, I might not be dressed like everybody else? You mean that you have a group of people that are dressed totally different, had a different morning, completely different morning routine, and you're all coming together? and worshiping and honoring one God, man, that is what's going to save our world. And I want to talk about today um, in Ephesians 4 what we need to be on the same page about in order for us to have unity. In order for us to have unity, there are, there are some things that we must be on the same page about. Because like I said, we're different. And God hasn't called us to look the same. God hasn't called us to talk the same. God hasn't called us to have the same hairstyle or wear the same boots or have the same life. No, no, no. But God has called us to be united. And so what does that look like? We're going to start in verse 3, and we're also going to read verse 4, Ephesians 4, 3 and 4. And it says, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace, for there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Number one, what we need to be on the same page about, the church of Jesus Christ is full of hope. In order for us to live and walk in unity as a body of Christ, we must believe that the church of Jesus Christ is full of hope. We must be on the same page when it comes to hope. I love that it says that there is one body, one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Hope. In order to unite us, hope is what unites us as a body of Christ. Have you ever been around a Debbie Downer? Have you, have you ever been around a negative person? Bless them. I mean, have you ever, right? Have you ever been around someone that it's like they should be walking around with that sound effect? Wah, wah. You know that sound effect, that wah, wah. I, just a Debbie Downer, just always focusing on the negatives, always so quick to point out the problems, so quick to point out how things aren't going to work. So quick to point out why it's not going to happen. Have you ever had a really great idea that you were excited about? And you talked to one of these lovely people. And you just instantly felt like I came with so much passion. And now I am already giving up on this idea entirely. Just after one conversation, they just tell you why it's not going to work. You're so excited, and then it's like, okay, I probably shouldn't have talked to you. You shouldn't have been the first person I told my idea to, because now I'm giving up on that idea. Uh, have you ever talked to someone about something you're really excited about, and they totally downplay it and make you feel stupid for being excited? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, am I alone up here? Have you ever experienced this? They make you feel stupid for being excited. They just tell you, all, well, you know, that's not going to work, because if you really think about it, and I know I've tried that before, and that doesn't really work. It's not going to work. And it's just a Debbie down, just wah, wah. And to be honest with you guys, there are so many uh, Debbie Downers in this room today. And uh, to be honest, to be honest, because we all have been a Debbie Downer. We all, I, I got to be honest, I have had my moments of being someone that is very quick to talk about why it's not going to work. I have had my moments of being very quick to criticize a great idea or to pull apart a blessing. 
I have been very quick. I, I, we all have had our Debbie Downer moments. Let's be honest. And I want to encourage those of us today that maybe as I'm saying this, you're like, actually, that is me. I think I'm in a season right now where I am a Debbie Downer, where I am negative, where I am quick to criticize, I am quick to point out problems. I want to encourage all of us today, man, your hopelessness does not just affect you alone. It affects the whole body. It affects the whole body. You see, some of us are very comfortable and so used to being negative. We're just comfortable. We're, we're used to pointing out problems. We're used to being the one to say, that's not going to work. And, and well, you, you got to think about this. And, and I don't know. Don't, we're so used to uh, making sure we downplay something before we get our hopes up. And you know why that happens? That doesn't happen because you just decide one day that you're going to hate your life. That's not what, what happens is that disappointments happen disappointments happen in our lives things don't line up or pan out the way we wanted them to and so we are disappointed you know why that happens because some of us have experienced church hurt and so when we come into the body of Christ and someone's preaching vision and this is what we're going to do next you kind of are just quick to be like yeah I don't know about all that because I've been here before and I don't know about all of that Body of Jesus Christ, the church of the living God, should be full of hope. And as the body, yes, 1,000%, we're going to have moments that we're negative. We're going to have moments that we're not going to fully understand. And as the body of Christ, we might have, you know, be dealing with disappointments. But I, I want to encourage you today to let that go and allow the Holy Spirit to heal your heart and to change your perspective and to begin to change your outlook, out, outlook on life. Because let me tell you, your hopelessness is not just affecting you. Number one, I want you to do it for you. Because the, the, the calling of Jesus Christ, the message of Jesus, Jesus Christ is that there is hope that there is hope that there is freedom that there is victory so number one for your life but I also want to say this too: your hopelessness your negativity bringing up problems is not helping the body of Christ your hopelessness is not just affecting you in your life it is affecting the body of Christ what does a church full of hope look like what does a church full of hope look like I'll tell you what it looks like. It, it looks like when our pastor is sharing the vision and a word from God that we all get excited, that we don't pick apart, well, I don't know, and I don't think that's for me. No, no, no. No, we get excited. We get our hopes up. We get our hopes up. We get excited. We come in, and we're ready. We say, okay, Lord, if you spoke it through our pastor, then it's for me. It's for me, and I receive it today. It's for me, and you know what? It's for the lady sitting next to me, and it's for the young man that's sitting in front of me. I believe that the church of the living God must be full of hope. Man, what does a, a, a church full of hope look like? It looks like us getting behind our leaders, our captains, and encouraging them and uplifting them and saying, you know what whatever God has put on your heart I'm behind you we're gonna do this thing I I'm behind you if I need to come in extra I need, if I need to put in some more time if I need to put in some more work I'll do it because I am full of hope and I am ready for all that God has for our church that's what a church full of hope looks like. It looks like people on a Sunday morning encouraging one another uplifting speaking faith speaking life into one another Man, in this day and age, we're, we're, I 1,000% believe that we should be, that we should relate to people and, and, and be understanding of what people are going through. But as the church of the living God, we aren't meant to leave people there. Yeah, I totally understand what you're, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, life sucks. This is terrible. Bye. The, the, we're not just called to relate. We're called to lead them to faith. We're called to lead them to hope. We're called to lead them to life, a church. Man, you're going through something. Let me pray for you right now because God's got a plan for your life. You're going through something. You're having a hard time in your marriage. Come here. Come here. We're, we're going to, I speak faith. I declare faith and freedom and victory over your marriage right now. It may be hard now, but God's got something better on the way. That is what a church full of hope. And imagine when people walk through those doors, new people walk through those doors, and they just see a whole bunch of hope everywhere they just see a whole bunch of people excited expectant full of hope uh, i mean who wouldn't want to be a part of that family 
Who doesn't want to be a part of that body that is full of hope, that is loving one another, uplifting one another? So I want to encourage you today, if you're discouraged, get your hopes back up. It's time to get your hopes back up. If you're dealing with hopelessness, it's time to get your hopes back up. If you're still hurting from the last church, if you're still hurting from the last relationship, it's time to get healing and get your hopes back up. God is not through with you yet, and you belong to a body that shares in one glorious hope, and that is Jesus Christ. You belong to a body that shares in one glorious hope, and that is Jesus Christ. You see, as the body of Christ, the glorious hope that we have, the hope we have to believe in an unshakable eternal kingdom. That's the hope we have. The hope that we have to believe that God will make a way where there seems to be no way. The hope that we have that we serve a God that does miracles. Come on, can I get an amen? We serve a God that does miracles. The hope that we have that every God-breathed idea and vision will be fruitful and prosperous. That is the hope we share. That's the hope we share. The hope that we have that every word written and spoken from God will come to pass. Even though most of it goes against all logic and reason. That is the hope that you and I share. We might not share personality types, but we share our hope. We might not share gifts, but we share our hope. We might not share the same story, same testimony, but we share our hope. We share our hope. The church of the living God must be full of hope. That is what we are called. That's what unites us. That's, what's, that's what unites us. And I, I, I want to say this too. I feel the Holy Spirit leading me to say this. So often, I, it, it is usually in when we are feeling hopeless, when we are um, disappointed with our life, when we are feeling discouragement and depression, that we feel the most disconnected from the body. Because if the body, if the foundation of the body is Jesus Christ, then there is hope flowing through those veins. <laughs> then there is hope flowing through the veins of the body of Christ. Man, you, you belong to the body of Christ. You belong to the body of hope. You belong to that glorious hope. It's time to let it go. It's time to get the healing we need and get our hopes back up. Get excited about what God is doing and belong to the body. For us to live and build God's church by blueprint, we as God's people, as people of the light, must walk and talk with hope. I'm going to read Ephesians 4, 5, and 6. We're going to go to the next two scriptures that we shared. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. Number two today, the church of Jesus Christ believes that there is one answer. That there is one answer. Today we are talking about what unites us, what we must be on the same page about, what we must put our efforts in as the body of Christ to make sure we are on the same page, to make sure that we are united, what we must seek, what we must uh, be, be purposeful and intentional about in order to have unity in the body of Christ is we must all believe that there is one answer. That there is one answer. Now, this one might seem a, a little obvious in the sense of if we all come to the same church, then probably we all believe the same thing, right? That Jesus Christ is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Amen? He is the, only, he is the one who saves us, right? This seems a little bit, yeah, of course we all believe that he is the, the only way. But I want to take it a step further today and Talk about when it comes to us accomplishing the mission of the church, which is to reach people and invite them into this body. I want to take it a step further from just talking about our salvation and talk about when it comes to uniting as a church and reaching lost and broken people. You see, we wholeheartedly believe that every single person in this room has a gift. Can you just say, I have a gift? Every single person in this room has a gift. God has given you a gift, and we believe that that gift is to be used to further his kingdom and that that gift should be used in the local church to serve the local church and to further 
uh, the Lord's kingdom. We believe that every person has a gift. But I want to say this because I think that if we just focus on our individual gifts, if we just focus on our gift, then we won't be united. You see, if I wake up on a Sunday morning and I walk through those doors and all I'm thinking about is what I'm doing, and you wake up and you come into the church and all you're thinking about is what you're doing, we will have a different definition of what a good, fruitful Sunday is. If we come in on a Sunday morning and, and we're just looking for ways for our gifts to shine and just praying over the ministry that we, yes, pray over your ministry, but if that's all we are praying for is just what we're doing, then we will all come in with different goals, we will all come in with a different focus, and we will all come in with a different win. If worship went good today, then I, great Sunday. Worship didn't go good today, but everything else did. Wow, this Sunday, man, Lord, find me faithful because this is hard. This I, it wasn't, it wasn't that great of a Sunday. I got to be honest. If we only come in and say, I got to pray for someone today, it was great. And the Sunday is that we don't get to use our gift. It's not a great Sunday. We don't testify about what God did in the lives of the people that came up to the altar. We... Yes, we're all in the same room, but we have a different heart. We have different purposes. Have you ever thought that you were on the same page with someone and then quickly realized you weren't? Yeah. Um, all the married people said amen. My husband and I... <laughs> It was funny. I was, I was, as I was preparing for this message, I was like, babe, can you think, help me think of some times that, you know, we thought we were on the same page and we weren't. And we both were like, I can't pick. Like, there's been so many times. But um, <laughs> honestly, like, there, it, that's what happens. You think, because how many of you guys know that men and women communicate differently? So you think you said something and they fully understood what you said. And no, they, they didn't. And, um, <laughs> Man, that's happened so many times. My husband and I, we will go to an event, a gathering, a party, and in the car, one of us will look at each other and say, we will not stay here very long. <laughs> I don't want to stay here very long. And the other one says, yeah, okay, yeah, for sure. Uh, we won't be here very long. Two hours later, <laughs> one of us is giving the other one the death stare <laughs> from across the room. I thought we were on the same page. We weren't going to be here very long. And here you are talking to everyone. And I know it, to be honest, that's happened. Jeremiah has given me that duster way more than I have given him that duster. So, I mean, I, I get it. But, man, we think we're on the same page and we find out we're really not. We're really not. Man, my husband and I, another example of my husband and I is, you know, we'll sit down to, you know, we want to do a date night in. Who likes a date night in? I, I love a date night in. Don't got to get ready. Just <laughs> hang out. And uh, so we were, we'll do a date night in, and we'll be like, let's watch something. Let's watch TV together, eat dinner and all that stuff. And we think we're on the same page. We're going to sit there, and we're going to, you know, we're going to enjoy something together. And uh, we quickly realized that um, even though we were on the same page for the date night, we weren't on the same page about what to watch. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't on the same page about what to watch. See, I'm like, any, I don't know if there's anybody else like me. I like reality TV. Does anybody like reality TV? And I know it's not really real, but, you know, it's fun. I like, I like uh, Married at First Sight. Anyone watch Married at First Sight? I like Married at First Sight, and I like Dateline. Who likes Dateline in, like, 2020? We are very complicated individuals. <laughs> We have layers to us, okay? Married at first sight one second, dateline the next, okay? We are very complicated individuals. So I like reality TV. So when I'm like thinking of like a night in, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna watch what happened to this couple. I'm gonna see, you know, if they're gonna last and if on the wedding day they're gonna say I do or I don't. I'm all excited about that. And then when my husband grabs the remote, he wants to watch like action movies where the stunts and the explosives are nothing near reality. <laughs> nothing, I mean, jumping on helicopters, what? While they're moving, throwing a grenade 10 feet away and being okay, come on, come on. 
he wants to watch those kinds of movies. I want to watch my reality TV. And so, man, it, we think we're on the same page. We're going to enjoy this night together. And then after a while, we're like, okay, you can watch yours in that room. I'll watch mine in this room. <laughs> That's why you got two TVs, y'all. That's why you got two. We're happy. We're happy. We're happy. Uh, another example of thinking you're on the same page. Um, I'm going to say this, and I, does anybody else, uh, coffee drinkers in the room, wave your hand. Coffee drinkers. We're the happiest people here today. Um, we, you know, I look forward every fall to the fall drinks. Anybody else? I look forward to the fall drinks. I usually order the same thing all year round, and then this time of year, I get the fall drinks and I get the Christmas drinks and just really jazz it up, right? And so I really look forward to the fall drinks. And um, I was like, you know, I was like, okay, I'm, a couple weeks ago, I was excited about going to Dutch Bros um, for a fall drink. And um, I'm going through the drive-thru and I asked the lady, um, what do you have that's pumpkin? <laughs> that's what I want. That's what I'm interested in. I need pumpkin. Thank you so much, Maria. I, I just want some pumpkin. And she goes, okay, well, the only pumpkin drink we have is the caramel pumpkin brulee, okay? Anybody try the ca caramel pumpkin brulee? Very good, very good. But I, I tasted it, and I was like, this doesn't taste, I don't taste the pumpkin. And I look it up, and I realize that th their pumpkin drinks only has pumpkin drizzle. And I'm like, Dutch Bros, I thought we were on the same page about what us fall drinkers like. If you like fall coffee, what we want is we want you to juice a pumpkin and add a couple shots of espresso. That's what we want. That's what we want. And Starbucks kills it every time, right? Starbucks, you, and then I go to Dutch Bros and I thought, I thought they're going to have a pumpkin drink and I'm going to love it and this is going to be beautiful and amazing. And they give me pumpkin drizzle. Not enough. Not enough pumpkin. Not enough pumpkin. I think that it's very, very funny and very true that so many of us in, in church, we think we're on the same page and we're really not. That we think we're getting each other, we think we're coming with one mind, one heart, one purpose, but really each of us is coming in just looking for ways to shine. Really we're each just coming in looking for ways for us to show off what we can do. Really, we're just looking in for, to come in and, and get some appreciation from people. Uh, and we're all coming in with different goals and different purposes. Man, the church of the living God, what we must be united on is that we believe that Jesus Christ is the only answer. You see, if I come in and all I'm thinking about is singing that day or praying that day or doing what I do, and all, that's all I'm thinking about is coming in and accomplishing what I'm asked to do, that's all I'm thinking about, then when I come in on a Sunday morning and you're coming in and you're just thinking about what you're doing, we're, we're separate. We're in the same room, but we don't have the same heart, the same focus, the same purpose. But see, Jesus Christ is the only answer, amen? So Jesus Christ, my gift alone cannot set the addict free. My, my gift alone, I can't come up here and say, la, la. And you guys are like, wow, that was it. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't, my gift alone doesn't set the addict free. Your gift alone cannot encourage the single mom that is working, that is coming in with a broken heart. Your gift alone, my gift alone can't save people from their sins. Our gifts alone without Jesus <laughs> are nothing. They, they cannot change anybody. That our gifts alone is not enough. Jesus is the only answer. Jesus is the only one that can set the addict free. Jesus is the only one that can break the chain of depression. Jesus is the only one. His presence, his power is the only thing that can change a sinner's heart. Not your gift, not my gift, not you, not me, not us alone. Jesus is the only answer. So what does it look like? We have different gifts, but we come in with different purposes. How can we be united? Well, I want you to think about this. Different gifts, same heart. Different gifts, same heart. If you don't get anything from my message today but that, I want you to, I, I want, I want you to remember that. Different gifts, same heart. You see, when I come in on a Sunday morning, I'm not just praying, Lord, help me in what I do. 
Thank you. Amen. You know what I'm praying? I'm praying, Lord, will you come and will you do what only you can do? Lord Jesus, will your presence, Lord, would you bless us with your presence? Would you bless us with your power? Lord, for the, for the single parents that are walking in, Lord, would you begin to heal their heart? God, would you help them hope again? Lord, for those that are walking in that are bound by addiction, Lord, would you set them free today? Lord Jesus, those that have physical ailments or broken hearts, would you heal them today? Lord, will you come and do what only you can do? That should be everyone's prayer. As a church, we don't come in just thinking about what we're going to do. We pray that God shows up. We pray our pursuit of the Holy Spirit is what unites us. Our pursuit of the power and the presence of God is what unites us. So whether you're doing what you do today or whether you're not serving today, that your prayer, that we come in with the same prayer. We, came, we come in with the same goal, the same focus, the same purpose, that Jesus will, will show up and begin to break the chains off of people, that Jesus would come in and begin to get people's hopes back up, that Jesus would come in and set them free, that Jesus would come, that the hardest of hearts would begin to be softened in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Our pursuit of his presence is what unites us so I want to encourage us as a church if you belong to Church of the Harvest when we come in on a Sunday morning let's not just think about what we're doing that day let's pray let's pray all of us together pray Lord Jesus we pray right now for your presence to fall Lord Jesus we ask that you would come and do what only you can do you're the one hope that we all share we don't have the same gifts but we have the same hope and we have the same purpose Lord, we want the same thing. We want lost souls, lost people to come in and experience you. That is the purpose. That is the goal. That is the different gifts, but the same heart, the same goal, the same purpose. Don't just pray for your ministry. Pray for everything. Pray for the entire dream team. Pray that God would begin to show up during worship. Man, during worship, as I'm worshiping, I'm not just, yes, number one, I'm worshiping for myself because I need his presence, but I'm inviting the Holy Spirit in to touch the person next to me, to touch the person in the back. I'm inviting the Holy Spirit in to come and do what only he can do because our gifts alone are are not enough we need Jesus we need the presence of God how dare us try and do ministry without God we need God we need God we need him and that is what will unite us <laughs> that's what's going to unite us we're not even in the same room some people are in the nursery right now some people are in the kids church right now but we're all united in our pursuit of Jesus we're all united in our pursuit of his presence because he is the only one that can set us free. In Philippians 2, 2, it says this, then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, loving one another, and working together with one mind and purpose. What brings us together as a church is our pursuit of his presence because, all, because we all know we are nothing without him, and he is the one that saves, delivers, and heals the lost and hurting people that walk through those doors. You see, what I love about our church is we have lost and hurting people always walking in. This is not a country club church. This is a church that has, where, where, where we just hang out as believers. Yay, we get to go to heaven. Yay. No, no, that's not this kind of church. This church, we, we believe the heart of God is for the lost. We believe the heart of God is to reach those that haven't been reached yet. And so as a church, we have lost and broken people walking in all the time. And what unites us is our goal and our purpose and our heart to just see Jesus come and do what only he can do. Different gifts, same heart. Lastly, number three, if I can get you to the keyboard. The church of Jesus Christ uses their individual gifts to bring unity. The church of Jesus Christ uses their individual gifts to bring unity. I want to read Ephesians 4, 11, and 13. It says this, now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord 
measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. I love this. You see, as we begin to come in with that mindset, different gifts, same heart. As we come in with one focus, Jesus, we need you. Jesus, we set this all up for you to show up. <laughs> we, we set this all up so that you will come and do what only you can do. Lord, th we're, we're united in our heart to just see you move in our city, to see you move in the lost and broken people. See, as we begin to be united, as we begin to live united in that same heart, we begin to see our gifts differently. A uh, couple weeks ago, we did DPH nights. DPH nights were amazing. Um, man, we did, if you don't know, our church has been blessed with a second location, a second campus. That's going to be a second campus as well as an outreach center. And um, every Sunday night in October, we went down there and we had food and we had bounce houses and we did a service, and man, it was just amazing. And if you don't know, man, I'm getting word back from that campus that we have people coming on Sunday mornings that went to DPH nights. People are coming in. So we, those DPH nights, man, not only bless the community, but man, the community is now starting to be a part of the body, which is amazing. But what was so beautiful about DPH nights is we had so much going on. You know, we had um, our hospitality team serving food out in, the, out in the parking lot. We had our parking lot team. Yes, give it up for hospitality team. And we had our parking lot team that was out there directing people and helping people. We had our pastoral care team out there. They were at the guest connection tent meeting and greeting people. And then when people came inside, we did some games. Me and Rochelle were having some fun with the games, making grown adults do things in front of people for a t-shirt. That was fun. That was fun. And then we went into, we had some concerts. We had Kevin perform. We had uh, Pastor Vince perform. We had, man, we had a message. We had worship. We, there was so much going on. Our production team, man, give it up for our production team. They were making it all happen. There was so much going on. And what was so beautiful about those nights was at the very end of the service, when there would be an altar call, and people would begin to stand up for prayer, I saw people from every single one of those teams rush over to those, per those people and begin to pray for them. Everything we were doing was leading up to that moment. <laughs> we were all serving in different ministries, doing different things, but we were united in the same purpose, that everything we were doing, it was leading up to that moment. <laughs> You see, if people got a caramel apple, that's great. We want to serve people. But, man, when people get a caramel apple and Jesus, <laughs> that's it. That's a fruitful event. You see, when, when we got an amazing parking lot team and everyone's, every, and man, our, the parking lot team killed it. It was just, it looked so good. Man, all the pastoral care team killed it. See, when we have all of these things, that's great. But it was all leading up to this moment. And what was so beautiful is that even though we all had different gifts, we were serving in different areas, in that moment, we all just, yeah, we all just rushed over to those people to begin to pray for them. Because that's what it was all about. It was all leading up to that moment. You see, all of our different gifts were working together to lead them to that moment. You see, a lot of people from the community, they came out because of the food. They came out, they came out because they saw bounce houses. They came out because they saw some low riders. They came out because they saw some cool motorcycles. So all of those, all of those teams, they were leading people to come out. And then once they got there, we had our pastoral care team and our parking lot team. They were meeting them. They were greeting them. They were making them feel comfortable. They, they were making them feel welcomed. And then as they began to walk into church from the games and the concert, man, it was just beginning to get people's walls down that they would see, oh, Oh, this isn't like some religious thing. No, no, no. I can have fun in church. Man, I can have fun in church. And then it just led right into the message and the worship, which God really touched people's hearts. You see, all of our gifts were working together to lead to that moment. So, some of the teams were why they came out. Some of the teams met them while they were there, helped break the walls down. Some of the, 
things that we did, they were to invite the Holy Spirit in so the Holy Spirit can touch them, but we were all working together. See, when we show up and we live every Sunday, every first Wednesday, every event that we do, when we come in with that same heart, Lord Jesus, we need you. Lord, and I'm not just praying for what I'm doing tonight. I'm praying for our, the entire body. I pray that you would anoint us, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would anoint us, God. I pray that you would use us mightily as we begin to speak to these people. Lord, I pray, Lord, that everything would lead to that moment. Everything would lead to that moment where they come to accept and receive you, Jesus, where they find out that there's more to life than just struggle. Everything was leading to that moment. As we have the same heart, we appreciate the different gifts because we're all working together. We're all working together for the same thing. All of our gifts and efforts work together and lead people to an encounter with Jesus. And I want to say this too, you know, this, this point of the church of Jesus Christ, they use their individual gifts to bring them together. You know, the devil wants to use our individual gifts to separate us. He wants to use our different backgrounds, our different personalities to divide us. The enemy so badly does not want us to be united <laughs> because of all of the reasons that I shared today because the unity is actually what's going to preach to the world that there's something better than what they're living right now. And the unity, all of our gifts working together is actually what's going to lead people to an encounter with Jesus. The enemy wants nothing more than to divide our church. He wants nothing more than for you to feel alone, for you to feel like no one cares, for you to feel like you're not connected and a part of the body. The enemy wants nothing more than all of us to show up and just think about what we're doing. The enemy wants nothing more than a church that comes in and only cares about getting for themselves and doesn't pray for the people around them. The enemy, that, that's what the enemy, the, the unity, the heart, the same purpose, the same mind, that's what's going to set this world free. That's what God has called us to. I want to ask us as a church, man, I, the, I know this is like crazy. It's like a different, but I want to ask us as a church to commit to unity, to commit to unity, to commit to Okay, Lord, I, I, I don't want to be hopeless because I know if I come in and I'm like, wah, wah, and I'm like, you know, boo-hooing all the time and I'm not, I don't, I'm not full of hope and I'm negative and I'm critical. I know if I come in hopeless, I know it's going to affect the whole body. So, Lord, I'm committing to being full of hope and not in a fake way, you guys. I'm not saying come in and when you're really going through it, put a smile on your face. I'm saying if you're going through something, come down and receive hope. Receive hope. Get your hopes back up. I want you to commit to getting your hopes back up and being a church that, that lives hope and begins to pour hope and life and faith into one another. And here's what else I want us to commit to. I want us to commit to praying before service, before events, whether it's during worship, whether it's on, in the car on your way here. I want us to commit to praying, not just for what we do. Yes, pray for what you're doing that day, but pray for the entire body. Pray that Jesus would show up, that, that he would inhabit our praises, and that he would come and do what only he can do. That he would come and set the captives free, that he would come and heal the broken hearts. Pray. I want you to commit to that. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to just come just thinking about what I'm doing. I'm coming and I'm, I'm praying over the entire dream team, over every single person that's walking in. Jesus, please come and have your way. That prayer is what's going to unite us because it's the same purpose, same heart. And also I want you to commit to using your gift to actually bring unity, to bring unity. Man, as I'm thinking about DPH nights, as I'm thinking about right now, Man, I appreciate our nursery team. Man, I appreciate our kids team. Man, what they're doing back there and what I'm doing right now, we're all working together for the same thing. That, that you would have an encounter with Jesus. That the, that the kids and the adults that come in, that they would come in and find Jesus. We're all working for the same thing. We're, in, we're not even in the same room, but we're united by that same purpose. And I not only appreciate those gifts, but man, I see that I, I, I can't do what I do without them. We're all working together. It brings unity. It brings unity. I want you to commit to that. That we would be a church that would be united. 
that despite our differences, despite our different personalities, we got different personalities, we got different backgrounds, we got different gifts, that despite our differences that we would not allow the enemy to divide, but that actually we would see that, wow, in spite of all these differences, we're united in the same hope. We're united in the same heart. We're united in the same purpose. Man, that everybody wants to be a part. Everybody wants to belong. Some of us in this room, that's why we came to this church, because we felt like we belonged. We found something that was much bigger than ourselves. We're a part of a body of Christ. Man, let's be a church that, that is full of hope, and let's be a church that's united so that more and more people can come in and be a part of this body. They can feel like they belong. They, they can feel like I'm a part of the body of Christ. Will you guys stand with me this morning? I want to read this last scripture to you while you're standing because just have to. It's just so good. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 through 21. It says this, but our bodies have many parts and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many, many parts, but only one body. Different gifts, same heart. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Every part of the body working together, leading up to the same purpose, same goal. All of us together. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes with me this morning? Lord Jesus, I just, I thank you for your church. God, I, I first and foremost want to just thank you that we get to be a part of your body, Lord. What a privilege, God, it is to be a part of your body, Lord, to be a part of your church, God. We thank you for your blueprint. We thank you for your blueprint, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your message, God. We thank you for what you have uh, poured into us today. And Lord Jesus, right now we commit to unity. Lord, come on, if you, if you commit to that, will you just lift your hands? Lord, see our hands, Lord Jesus. We commit to unity Lord, we know that unity just doesn't just happen on its own, but that unity takes effort. That unity is our responsibility as your body, Lord. God, I pray right now that you would help us to walk in unity. Lord Jesus, I pray for every single person in this room right now that feels hopeless, that feels discouraged, that is clouded by disappointment, that, that, that has had such a hard time just feeling excited about anything, being ex expecting about anything. Lord, I pray for those people right now. I pray that you would fill them with hope right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, for every single person battling depression and anxiety and critical thinking and religious thinking. I pray right now that you would set them free from that. I pray that you would begin to fill them with hope that you would remind them that our hope is not in circumstances our hope is not things going by our plan but our hope is in you Jesus and our hope is in your faithfulness our hope is in your goodness our hope is that you are a miracle working God that is what our hope is in Jesus not circumstances not things going our way Lord we don't put our hope in those things Lord we don't put our hope in other things Lord our hope is in you Jesus God, our hope is in you, Lord, and we are united by that hope. So I pray, Lord, every single person, I pray that they would begin to get their hope back up right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that they would begin to get their hope back up, that they would begin to believe again, that they would begin to be excited again, that they would begin to live in hope again, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would unite us in hope, that we would lift one another up. God, I pray that as we walk in, God, on a Sunday morning, as we walk into our small groups, Lord, as we walk into first Wednesday Lord use us to ignite hope in one another Lord Jesus that we would not walk around as people that are defeated in darkness but that we would walk around as people in the light people of the light people of victory father
God, I pray that you would help us to get behind our pastor and every vision and every word that you have spoken to your church. Let us get behind it, Lord. Fill us with excitement and hope, Lord Jesus, as he begins to speak vision and your word over us, Lord. Let us get behind our leaders, Lord. Let us get behind our captains and the ideas, the God-breathed ideas and plans that they have, Lord Jesus. God, let us, let us lift up and encourage one another, Father. Lord Jesus, we need you, God. I pray, Lord, that as we begin to commit to prayer, that as we begin to commit to praying and asking for your presence, as we begin to uh, commit to pursuing your presence on Sunday mornings, Lord, God, we know you're going to show up. Your word says that you'll show up. So we ask that you would come and have your way. God, I pray that we would see supernatural signs and wonders like we never have before, not because of our gifts, but because you're in the room, not because of what we can do, but because of our pursuit of your presence presence because we have the same heart the same purpose the same mind God God I pray right now that you would begin to come and do what only you can do that we will see our lost family members come and find you Jesus not just because of our prayers but because of the prayers of the entire church not just because of our pursuit but because of the pursuit of the entire body God thank you Jesus Lord will you use us Lord Lord help us to use our individual gifts Lord to appreciate others' gifts, Lord. God, let us see our gifts as something that unites us, not something that divides us, Lord. Something that unites us, Lord, that we're all here for the same purpose, same reason, God. We love you, God, we honor you today. If you're here today and you would say, you know what, this, this unity that you're talking about, this body that you're talking about, the church of the living God, I wanna be a part of that. <laughs> maybe you're new here, maybe this is your first time, or maybe you've been coming, um, you know, every other week, and, and maybe you're hearing this, and you're like, wow, that church that she's talking about, I want to be a part of that, that church full of hope, that church uh, believing that there is one answer, that church that helps th their community and reaches the lost, I want to be a part of that. If that's you, would you just begin to raise your hand? Lord, I pray for these people right now, God, every single person, God, that wants to be a part of this body, God. Lord Jesus, I pray that as they begin to take their next steps, Lord, as they begin to come to growth track, as they begin to connect to the body, maybe come to a small group, Lord, I pray that they would begin to feel the life and the hope that flows through the veins of your body. God, I pray that they would begin to connect, that they would begin to unite with the body, Jesus, and that they would be a part of God, of what will never be shaken, your church will never be shaken, what will never be moved, and what will stand the test of time, God. I pray that right now. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would have your way in us and through us, God. Make us a church that follows your blueprint, God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Can you give it up for God's word today? Such a good God.